So section 10.5 counting notes, you'll notice that there's a two in the upper right corner because this will be the second set of notes that you'll be doing. You can hold on to that, Katie, until tomorrow. So you can copy those down tonight. If an event M can occur in lowercase m ways, it is followed by an event N that can occur N ways. If an event M followed by event N can occur in, or the, then the event M followed by the event N can occur in M times N ways. M times M, yeah. M multiplied by N. So you could rewrite this, actually, like this. So we have m times n equals ways or possibilities or choices or chances, that sort of thing. These are lowercase. Yep, you'll see. You'll see what we mean. We'll see what we mean, because that's one way of doing it. So we're going to use that fundamental counting principle for example one, two, and three. <laughs> mm, excuse me. Now, Brett, is everybody done with that top part? Let me rephrase that. Is anybody not done with the top part? Yes, sir. Sorry, say it again. My whiteout. Ah. Um, we'll just erase it. Use a pencil for math. The only pen that you should have in this class is red, and it's for checking your work. A tree diagram. Now, you guys did this last year. Okay? You guys did this last year, but do you think this is going to be as easy as it was last year? No, it's not going to be as easy as it was last year. There's different ex expectations for this year. It's going to be very similar, actually. It's going to be very similar, but it's going to be more difficult. So hopefully we can change that. Hopefully we can change that. Yes, sir? It is, but you're smarter this year than you were last year. You are smarter and wiser. Now, Breadco, yeah, Breadco's current sam options for sandwiches. Now, it says meat options. People are like, oh, vegetables not a meat. I know, it's a meat option. Meat options are chicken, tuna, and veggie. The choices for bagels are plain or onion bagels. Hey, do you guys know what kind of bagels fly? Plain bagels. I get it. Oh. Oh, number one. All right. No, I actually just saw it, heard it last night. I was in a interwebs. Well, I thought it was very, it was very fitting. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to build a tree diagram. Now, the reason it's called a tree diagram is because what happens with trees? They get bigger. Now, when they reach the, the typical tree is just one thing coming out of the ground, and then it gets more branches, correct? So we are going to create our one thing coming out of the ground. Right there. All the way to the left. All the way to the left. Yes, ma'am. Then we are going to put our event M. Event M, and this is an event. Not the amount of the event, but the event. What is the event M for this one? Usually the event is going to be some sort of noun, an occurrence. What is our first thing that we're dealing with here? Go for it. It's okay if you're wrong. The options. The options? What kind of options? So the meat options. Meat options. That's our that's our situation M. Okay? That's our event. Now, our meat options are there. What are the meat options? What's one of them, Olivia? Chicken. So write that down. JT, what's another one? Tuna. Tuna. Ensley? Veggie. 
Now, last period or the period before, they were complaining, saying that veggie isn't meat. True, it's your meat option, okay? It's your meat option. Now, in order to make this into the tree diagram that we're doing, let's go from you, which is that thing, there. So that's the first thing you have to decide. I need to decide whether we have chicken, tuna, or veggie, if you're willing to eat any of those. So that's our M, our situation M. What is our event N, capital N, as in negative? Uh, Briley. Bagels, beautiful. So N, oops, capital, N, bagels. Now, question for you. Why am I putting N, bagels, there? Why? That is my other option, but can I just... Can I just put bagels here? No. Question, what, could it make sense if I just put bagels there? You, you can have an idea of where this is going because you've done something similar to this last year, but why, why do I have this N here? Martinez? It's a variable. It's a variable? Mm, true, it does vary with that. So you don't think it's a choice. Good, because it's not the ways of doing it, it's the event itself. And also, how much sense did this make when you were writing it? Now that you see an M, meat, N, bagels, are you starting to see what this might be when you're going over it tonight if you get confused? Yeah. Okay. There's a reason that we write everything down. I want to remind you, you are expected to have your homework out next to your notes every single time that you do it. Okay. If you didn't do that, all this time that we spend in class doing this is for nothing. Okay. Let's not waste our own time. Yes? It's capital. That's the event. Nope, I could see that. Yeah, that's kind of small. I'm trying to fit as much on here as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, what are my choices of bagels? What are my choices of bagels? Plain and onion. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put plain here. Plain and onion. Now, that is my choice of bagels. Now, I have chosen, for example, I've already chosen to do chicken. So that means that I can go from chicken mm, and I can choose either plain bagel with my meat of chicken, or I can use an onion bagel with my meat of chicken. See how I went from having three branches, now I have two more coming from one option? What do you think is going to go underneath that onion word? Klein. Good. And what? It, where is it going to come from? It's going to come from these bagels? Tuna. Goes from tuna. Where's my blue? There you go. Plain. Onion. Then you can see where this is going to be going. We're going to have the same options for the veggie bagel. Plain. Onion. Black. Here. And here. So I went from having three strands of my tree to now I have six strands of my tree. From this point, you are going to draw a straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. You're going to have six of them if you're doing this correct, if you're copying this down as I'm copying this down, as you should be. And these are going to be over here, our sandwich, sandwiches. Is the these are sandwiches. Now, with this part, we can abbreviate because we can follow the tree branches to see what each of these represent. I have how many options now did we just discover for our... How many options did we just discover there? Collier? There are six options. You have six options of things you can do with only three kinds of meat. So we have chicken with plain, chicken with onion. We have tuna with plain. Ooh. I want you to finish that tree. You finish that tree. Just the same way I started it. Yep. There are four situations on the homework that you'll be doing this. I'm going to help you out with one of them. We have enough time today that I can give you an example.
You guys got that done already? So you should have this. And of course, you have to answer the question. Yes, ma'am. There you go. Put a little registered trademark on there. I was going to say St. Louis Bread Co. or Panera, but I was like, you know what? This is going to be on YouTube. No, thanks. Any questions on the tree diagram? Yes, sir. There's no like, only diagram. Mm -hmm. like, so say you have like four meats and two things, and you just multiply that. And, like, you also do that one with the same That is exactly what this is. But if you just take the two numbers that are in your assignment um, on your homework tonight, you're not going to get them right. We need to make sure we know which is the event, which is because it's more abstract than that. It's talking about you roll a seven-sided die uh, three times, that sort of thing. So if you just did seven times three, you're not going to get the same answer. Okay. But yes, the logic of last year is like number, number, multiplied together, and that's what the fundamental, um, the fundamental uh, counting principle is that we have atop. Example one. This one we're going to use the fundamental counting principle. So again, bagels. A bagel, a bagel bakery makes 10 types of bagels, nine types of bagels, and has 10 flavors of cream cheese. They wanted to advertise a number of different bagel with cream cheese combinations that is possible. How many should they advertise? How many possible are there? Now, before you do this, the hard part about the homework is identifying the events and how many times those events happen. I'm sure that some of you already have the answer, but the bottom line is we are going to show everything so when you're home tonight, you don't miss out on anything. I want the first thing, which is going to be to identify our events. What is event one? Alex, you'll do one, and uh, Walter, you do the second one. So, no. That's a way. That's a lowercase. We're looking for the uppercase M. It's an event. It's a noun. Yes. Bagels. Then the lowercase m, we'll get to that, but I want you, Vanessa, please can you tell me what the uppercase n is? What's the other event? Cream cheese. Cream cheese. Cream cheese. Yes, sir. Um, I want you using this because that's the way that uh, the definition actually defined it, and be, I don't want to confuse it with any X and Y. Saying it isn't as nice, but... Now, what's the lowercase version of the uppercase again? Uppercase is the event. Lowercase is what? What is it? The ways the event can occur. So how many ways can this uh, bagel event occur, Aiden? Beautiful. And how many event? How many uh, time? How many different ways can the cream cheese event happen? Ten. So I have my fundamental counting principle, which is going to be lowercase m times lowercase n equals the amount, because it's going to be a different description each time. This one is uh, how many choices. The next one we're going to have um, options, that sort of thing. Now what do we do? Eric. So you're rewrite it. Now when you're rewriting, what's the word for when you're rewriting? You're putting numbers where variables were. Here's a clue. It's if I wasn't here today and you were here. This is an algebraic expression. Yes, sir. You are correct. Yeah you're going to substitute in for the variables. So we have 9 times 10 equals moss. Can you do that one? Yeah. 90 what? Chickens? What? 90 combinations. Ninety combinations. I'm going to circle that right there so your teacher knows what, where the answer is. Ninety combinations. And that's just off of nine bagels and ten different kinds of cream cheese.
Any questions on that? Okay, let's do one. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. We could have done the uh, the principle on this one as well. We have three different kinds of meat. Okay, we have two different kinds of bagels. All right, three times two, six. Some of you might be able to rep visualize this a little bit better, and that makes more sense to you. Some of you like to visualize this a little bit more, and that might make sense to you. So if you don't know which one makes the most sense, that's why we're doing multiple ways, so you can hopefully retain that information that much more. Joe. Um, wait, you said there's going to be uh, four on the homework? Four tree diagrams on the homework, yes. Is that what you're just verifying? Yeah. Gotcha. Trey? Does it matter uh, which one is in and which is in? The um, in theory, no, because of the commutative property of uh, multiplication, which you, that means you can put it in any order that you want to as long as everything's being multiplied. But I would just recommend, so you keep track of it, whatever event they talk about first, make that one M. Okay? I'm going to challenge you a little bit here. I want you to identify M, lowercase m, N, and lowercase n, please. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. And I'll give you one minute, for example two, please. For example two, I'm going to give you one minute. Then I'll show you what I have for it, and we'll go from there. Got it? Pick up your head. Let your neck do its job. You tired? You sick? No? Let your head, let your neck do its job. Sit up. No, you're still soft. Sit up. Sit up. There you go. Okay. Let's see if we got uh, M down. Now, if I were to do this, I have an event. Okay, I have an event that's happening. A short story. Okay, I have a, kids can choose from a short story. So that's my M, short story. Okay, how many short stories can they choose? They choose 16 short stories. That's my lowercase M. Now my N is, okay, one short story, one poem. Beautiful poem. So I'm going to choose from a list of 16 short stories and H poems. Oh! What do I write there? Yeah. H. H. This is our unknown right now, then. Okay? It's an H. But then it's not done. It says there are 304 different combinations of short stories and poems possible. Find the number of poems. On how, how is this different than what we did here? What's happening in this situation? Bollinger? You don't need to find a variable in that one. Okay, we're not solving for a variable, solving equations, like from November. Uh, 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 Caden. We're going to divide. Let's take it one step at a time. You might know what's going on right now, but when I'm doing this tonight and I'm tired, you know, I just got done with with uh, uh, whatever events going on today. Okay, I'm not going to be. Re I might not be as keen as I'm in this class right now and as focused as I am. Let's take it back. Let's make it look like this. Okay. Yes.
equals amounts of something, right? You look confused, JT. Do you not know where he got these from? Okay. Let me know if you have a question, okay? Austin, what's my next step? Is it? Why isn't the combination part? No, the N is how many times the poem happens. And we don't know about that. It says they have to choose from 16 stories and H amount of poems. Olivia. It, it is 304 combinations. 304 different combinations. Remember, how much have I emphasized over the last two weeks to answer the question being asked? How many times have you heard me say that in class? Yeah, yeah, a couple hundred probably. Okay? Be careful what you're doing because they're getting more specific. As you're getting more ability to answer higher level questions, they're going to give you more information here. Okay? That's why it's important to take your time with this. That's why there's only 10 questions on the homework tonight. But it's still going to take you 45 minutes possibly to do it. Trey. Okay? What is the next step, sir? And when we replace these, what are we really doing? Substituting. Substituting. So we are going to have our M, which is 16. We have our N, which is H. Now, do I need to have a, uh, a multiplication sign here when I have a variable? Yes. No. No. Nope, it's already there. When 16 is a coefficient, it's already there. Equals what? What's the amounts? JT, 304, we already have that one. And flashback time, now what are we going to do? Michaela, Maddie, Maddie, divide by what? Beautiful, well said. We're going to divide both sides by 16 because we have to solve for the variable inverse operations. Okay, inverse operations. And since we're not using calculators anymore because finance weeks are over, <laughs> work it out. Work it out. That's all right. I'm going to work it out because I expect you to work it out. Work it out. Show your work. No more calculators anymore. We're back to reality. If you got, when you're done, see what I got circled here? That's what you should have. Nope. The question is asked is how many poems are there on the list? You've got to answer the question that's being asked. Nineteen poems. Trey. Do you want us to put H? You know what? Since they're only asking H equals 19 poems is just fine. That's beautiful. But I don't want to see just H equals 19. Okay? If there's words in the question, I need to see words in the answer. Okay. There needs to be words in the answer. Yes, ma'am. No, no. Finance, finance will not be on the test. This is just going to be probability and odds and that sort of thing. Yep, chapter ten. Good question. All right. A die is rolled twice. Okay, it's the same die that's rolled twice. For A, how many possible outcomes are there? Now, what am I going to ask you first? What have we been doing? 
Okay, the meat. Yes, and what was the meat in that question? Okay, we have event M. What a, so we have one die. Would it be a die, a die rolled, right? So we're going to say roll one. We're going to say roll one. We're going to say roll one. Roll one. So if I'm doing roll one as that, what do you think N is going to be? What do you think N is going to be, Austin? Roll two. Now we have how many ways can M and N happen? How many ways can that happen? Yeah. How many ways can roll one turn out? How many different ways? 36? One. Now if the if we had a chance of it hitting the floor or not, if we had a chance of it hitting the floor or not, that would be it, it would hit the floor with no other things messing with it. But if we are rolling a die, how many different ways can we get a result? Six. There's six. There's six different ways that the roll can re come out. Remember we rolled them down yesterday? There's one option. There's two, three, four, five, and six, because it's a six-sided die. And if we are going to roll it one time, how many times can, or what's the different things for the second roll? Klein. There's six. There's six. Now we have our substitution here. We have our m times n equals amount. I'm going to go ahead and substitute those in. Does that look familiar? It is one die happening twice. I take my die, I roll it, I come back, I roll it again. So I'm going to take... That's not what I want to do. If I take this single die, if I can find it again. There. Yeah. If I take this single die here and I roll it one time, okay, it's going to have one, two, three, four, five, or six. Now, I'm not rolling two at the same time. I'm taking the second one again and rolling it. Okay? It was the same one. It's not two of them if I wanted. If I wanted to roll two, I'd roll two at the same time, okay? And we'll play with these more in the future. So there are 36 possibilities. That time I just rolled a two, and if I would have let that one go, it could have been any of six things. Six times six, 36, okay? We did that yesterday with probability. <coughs> Question? Possibilities. Possi oh. Possibilities. Okay. Beautiful. Possibilities. Possible. That's probabilities. Help me out. It is I, yeah. What did I have? Oh, I left the L out? Good. You made me second guess myself now. Okay. So we had 35 possi 36 possibilities. Now, what are the possibilities, not probability, that was yesterday, the possibilities of rolling a 5 and then a 6? What's our capital M, our, our lowercase m, our capital N, and our lowercase n? It's going to be a little different. What's our capital M? Rolling five. Yes. Roll a 5. Beautiful. You guys are getting it. Riley, what we got for capital N? Roll six. Now here's the tricky part. What are the ways of rolling a six? Hmm. 
Moss. Yes! One sixth! One sixth! It's not six ways of rolling a, a, a five. There's not, it's not a six sided die with all five on it. It's a six sided die with just one five on it. So there's one six way. So how many chances are to roll a six then? Yeah. Beautiful. One sixth. And we're going to substitute our M and our N to find the amount. Yeah, you said six twice. Oh. I got excited. M times N equals the amount. Colin, what does uh, one sixth multiply by one sixth mean? Or what is it? Hmm. Yeah. One thirty sixth. And there's from, let's see, September. Multiplying fractions, just multiply straight across. Okay, one thirty sixth chance of rolling. One in 36 chance of rolling five, then six. Circle that so my teacher knows what I'm doing. Landon. You are thinking of adding fractions on that one. Yep, adding fractions. When you multiply fractions, it just goes straight across. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, you need to have find a common denominator. Do you remember what I would when I'd be walking around class like this? Adding and subtracting fractions, find a common denominator. When I was doing this, trying to get you guys to remember that? I remember that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you may turn in extra credit. There's already been two submissions. Just as a reminder, extra credit is due. February 12th. If you need an extra copy, I've got more copies. Yes, sir. One more. One more. I'm going to see, it's definitely going to be more than last one because this one is a lot more involved. I'm thinking maybe worth, don't quote me on this, possibly two and a half homework assignments, so or maybe even a quiz grade which should be 30 points toward your assignment, or to your grade. We'll see. Yes, sir? I, I just passed it out. We're going to talk about it right now. Okay? I want everybody to turn their homework over. Turn it like this. So turn it 90 degrees so it's in landscape mode. And I would like you to cut it down the middle and do one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's where you're going to be doing your work for numbers one through four. I expect one through four to be on the back side of your assignment. Good. Now, I have number four for you right here, okay? So you can just look on the board. So you're going to go down to the right, bottom right box where it says number four, and we're going to set this up. I'm going to help you set it up, and then I'm going to help you set up number seven, and that's it, okay? Then you guys can, because I want to make sure that you're answering these, not just going with whatever number we've got. So Tina has a choice of sports jersey in blue, white, gray, or black in sizes small medium, and large. Yes, ma'am. You will be, it will be very difficult for you to get any of these wrong if you have the M's identified and the N's identified. So what do you think we're going to do right now? Mm -hmm. We're going to identify the M and the N. So since this is a tree diagram, the first thing I'm going to do, put that there. There's Tina. Then I'm going to put my M right here, the same way that we did in our examples. Then I'm going to put my N there. It's going to be 
possibly big. What is my choice M? Drake. Jersey colors. Yes. I'm so glad you didn't say jerseys. Now, I'm going to say jersey color. So I could just say color, right? Color. Now, if you would have said jerseys, this is how I was going to respond. I would have said, well, you only have one choice of jersey. It's sports, right? You would have multiple events, multiple ways of that event happening, and we have multiple colors here. So then we have color, and then we need our second event. Eric, what you got? Size. Size. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. So does this, can you guys visualize where this is going to go? There's going to be something here. Yeah? How many, how many strings am I going to have come from here? Four. So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay? I'm going to leave it like that. So you guys can go from there. Now, here's one where if you just do whatever you want, okay, without identifying stuff, you can make a silly mistake. Two quarters are tossed. Then a four sided die is rolled. Two quarters are tossed. What is my situation M? Now, we don't have to do a tree diagram with this. This is the last half of the uh, assignment. This is 5 to 10. You are more than welcome to do that. If you use a T diagram, leave enough room, please. Okay, I want to be able to read that when I look at your homework. Yeah. Okay, so that is the first event. Two quarters tossed. Can you see that back there? I know it's not beautiful handwriting, so I'm writing quick. Katie, can you read that? This is number seven, sir, correct. Two quarters are tossed. What are the amount of ways that that can happen? How many are there? How many are there? Who haven't I heard from today? Who's been? Ms. Ladd, how many ways can that turn out? Two? I have two quarters being tossed at once. Four. We can have tails, 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 heads, 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 tails, four. Then we have M or N as in nobody. A four sided die is rolled. Die rolled. How many different ways can that turn out? Yeah. Twenty four? Sixty. Sixteen. Okay, I could see where you're going from there. How many die are being rolled? Okay, wouldn't that say two dice? Wait, Bollinger? There's only four. It's a four-sided die. It's a four-sided die. You can have a one and a two and a three and a four. Okay, so that one is also set up for you. What, now you're going to be uh, using the fundamental counting principle and apply that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Joe? Uh, number four, can we just uh, abbreviate the small Yes, good question. Yeah, there's a lot of writing with that one, so you can just avoid the small, medium, large. There is one large multiplication uh, that you have on this one. No, you're still not allowed to use the calculator. Okay? So you got about three minutes here to continue. I'll answer your questions, and we got about three minutes before class is over. Yes? Um, yes, there is, actually. It's, it's, it's shaped like a cone. <laughs> 